Howdy, I'm Bob Terry, and welcome to the Forsaken Westerns. This episode stars Dick Powell and that wonderful, intimidating bad guy, Robert Wilkie. This episode has some twists and turns, a few unexpected things, kind of different for a Western, things that uh, would arise, some problems that would arise with people that a Western might not usually touch on. And these actors handle it very well, very believable, and this episode has a very interesting twist of an ending. This episode is titled, A Spray of Bullets. We'll see you after the show. Enjoy it. Hey, Tom. Well, you all set for the rodeo this afternoon at Morgan's? <laughs> Take a heap more in the rodeo to get me a half mile out of town. Nope, I'm going to sit right here. <laughs> You'd be about the only man left in town. There'll be a big crowd there. Well, don't get too lonesome. <laughs> I never do. Phineas. Kingston once when he was sheriff. Howdy, Mr. Charlotte. Hi. Phineas, you better go get the sheriff. What for? Ain't no crime for a man coming into town, is there? Will Sonnet ain't sheriff no more. Besides, you know who's in that saloon? Ben Crane. Now go get Sam and tell him to keep his eyes wide open. The sheriff is out at Morgan's. Besides, I wouldn't tell him no how. And we're liable to see some real excitement with Crane and Sonnet in town. Well, I'll go tell him myself. Maybe you'd like to see trouble if the sheriff won't. Come on. Ah, sure. Oh, sorry to keep you waiting, sir. I was just having something to eat. Come to Mesa for the rodeo this afternoon? No. Oh? Should be checking out in the morning. We're going to get a bath. We have a tub right here in the hotel. Would you like to reserve it? Of course, it's an extra charge of 50 cents for the boy to bring up hot water. I want it right away. All right, I'll take care of that, sir. And I do hope you're going to enjoy your stay with us, Mr. Uh... Sonnet? That's right. Now, if there's anything I can do for you, I mean, anything at all, any, anything that, that you... Let's start with the key. Huh? The key. Oh, yes, of course. That's, uh... Room nine, sir. Thank you. inside, I tried the office. No, he's gone out to Morgan's. See if everything's ready for the rodeo this afternoon. I'm sure you can find him there. It's a fine thing. One time we need a long man and Sam's out of town. What's wrong? Nothing yet. But Mesa's got a visitor. A visitor whose gun is slung low and knows how to use it. A gunman in Mesa? And one thing sure. Will Sonnet don't just travel around for the fun of it. Will Sonnet? Sonnet, her pickup don't make no difference. Wherever that kind is, there's bound to be gunplay. And it's your Paul's job to protect us citizens. Where is he? Checked in the hotel. Why? Hello, Will. Lucy. It's been a long time. 
long wait. I'm glad it's over. Oh. Do you mind my rushing here? I know I'm meeting you more than halfway. No, no, I'm glad you did. We changed much in a year. Well, if anything, you're prettier. <laughs> it's good to see you, Lucy. Oh, I know. When Dad and I left Kingston, I was mad. I was so mad, I thought I never wanted to see you again. You told me, remember? I'm so glad you've come. Glad you've changed. Is that why you think I came, Lucy? Because I've changed? Well, isn't it? Lucy, nothing could make me happier than seeing you, but I have to be honest with you. I didn't know until you walked in the door that you were even in Mesa. I see. But it shouldn't make any difference, really. I, I, I'm grateful to see you, very grateful. Well, I'm afraid it makes a great deal of difference, Will. I come rushing in here and throw myself into your arms and tell you how glad I am you came for me. And you hadn't come for me at all. Lucy, Lucy. What did you come for, Will? Well, I... I have some business to take care of. I guess I made quite a fool of myself, didn't I? No, no. Will, I told you a long time ago that if you ever willing to quit wearing a gun, I'd be waiting for you. But you haven't changed. You're the same man, and you've even got the same gun. Don't worry. I won't interfere with your business. Mr. Sonnet, my name is uh, Phineas, Phineas Turner. I seen you when you gunned down Rich Long in Tucson four years ago. Fastest draw I ever seen, faster than lightning. We'll talk about it some other time, huh? Yeah, sure, sure. You got business now, right? That's right, yeah. He's in the saloon. Oh, you don't have to worry about me. I ain't gonna interfere. I'm afraid you lost me, old timer. Look. You can level with me, Will. I know that you got to play at Cagey, but you got nothing to worry about. The sheriff is out of town, and you got plenty of time. Plenty of time for what? Ben Crane. What about Crane? Well, Crane came into town just about an hour before you did. Took his horse over at the blacksmith shop. Said he's got to stay around until his horse is reshot. So? So, I believed him. Until I see you come riding in, then things add up. Tough gunman Ben Crane just happens in town. And then, Will Sant comes moseying in. Shucks, <laughs> that's just like putting a wolf or a wildcat in the same stall. You got a great imagination. You mean to tell me you didn't come to town to meet Ben? We've met before. Sorry to disappoint you. Hey, Sonnet. Will Sonnet in a hick town like this. It's a strange world. Yeah, sure is, Ben. You just passing through town, Will? Maybe. How's about yourself? Maybe. I ain't seen you in a long time, but I heard about you giving up your sheriff's job over in Kingston. Oh, you did? Yeah. Darn if I'll ever forget the time you locked me up on a drunk charge. Remember? You didn't think it was so funny at the time. Well, that was a couple of years ago. A man changes. Take a gunman. He can get a lot faster in a couple of years. I guess he can. Practice makes perfect. I wouldn't say it was exactly perfect, but I have been getting a lot of practice. So I hear. Funny us running into each other like this. I was a little clumsy with a six-shooter back in my Kingston days. Think you're any better now? I'm not sure, Will. Uh, that pays to be sure. It stakes pretty high if you lose. You know, I reckon I'd rather have your reputation than anyone else's. You got a good bluff and you're fast enough to back it up. Reputation doesn't mean much. It's a matter of opinion. Some people kill for a reputation. Take you. If I was to kill you, people would call me a big man. Is that what you want to be? Like you said, it pays to be sure. And I ain't exactly sure if I'm fast enough. Yet. Care for a drink? No, thanks. Maybe some other time, Will. Maybe. Oh, Mr. Charlotte, just a minute. I want you to meet our sheriff. Howdy. Is that any way to greet an old friend? Sam! The old son of a gun. Sun was in my eyes. I couldn't see you. Fine way to treat your old deputy. I'm glad to see you. 
Talk to Lucy a little earlier. She didn't say anything about you being sheriff here. I'm surprised she'd let you take this kind of a job. Well, it's a pretty quiet town. That is, when there ain't men like you around. I heard you give up the badge in Kingston last month. Yeah. Been wondering when you'd come back for Lucy. I always figure you two could make a go of it. Well, that, uh... That isn't why I came here. Oh? No, I came here... I have a little business here. I see. Well, I hope you won't cause any trouble. I didn't come here for that. There won't be any trouble unless someone else starts it. Like to talk? Maybe later. She'll be through with my business about a half an hour. All right. My office is down the street. I'll be waiting for you. Fine. Dr. Sanders. I wonder what's ailing him. He ain't that kind of a doc. He's an arc uh, something. An eye doctor. An eye doctor? Why do you figure a fella like Sonnet travels all this way just to see an eye doctor? Kind of funny, ain't it? Yeah, mighty funny. Here he comes, Ben. Heading for the sheriff's office. Are you sure that doc he wants to see is an eye doctor? Of course I'm sure. Sam? Finish your business? Just about. I'll be all set by tomorrow morning. Just what are you doing here in Masonville? You ask him as a friend? I'm asking as a sheriff. That's what I'm paid to be. Folks get edgy when a man with your reputation comes to a town like this. They want to know why. They want to know if there's going to be trouble. So, my job is to find out. I see. You didn't come here to meet Ben Crane, did you, Will? No, no. Ben and I met by accident. He's a pretty fast boy. Ben's fast, but he couldn't outdraw you. Look, Sam, I told you I didn't want any trouble. I could whip Ben easy, up close. What do you mean, up close? Well, that has to do with the real reason I came to Mason. Now, if I'm through talking to the sheriff, I'll be glad to tell my friend why I'm here. Start talking, friend. You know something, old man? I feel like I'm getting a case of eye strain. I think maybe I better go up and see that doctor. Yes, sir. I understand you're an eye doctor, is that right? That's right. Are you working on something now? Well, it's a pair of spectacles for a new patient. Uh, how long does it take to make up a pair? Well, these will be finished by tomorrow morning. But uh, if you're in a big hurry, suppose we run a test, see just what's wrong. Sure, why not? Well, all right, sit right down here. Funny how I found out about you. I just run into my old friend, Will Sonnet. We got to talking, he told me about you. Oh. It uh, seems like Will and I both got about the same ailment. Oh, you mean everything over 20 yards is all blurred? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's a pretty miserable thing to happen to a man. So that's why you quit as sheriff, hmm? What else could I do? First, I thought it was sun blindness. I'd been trailing a man out in the desert. Then when the blurring didn't go away, I got scared. I thought I was going blind. Good thing you heard about the doc here. Yeah, he's kind of hard to find, West. Travel around a lot. So your eyes have been bad for over two months, eh? Yeah. What about Lowell Tharp? What about him? We heard you had a fight with him just two weeks ago in Silver City. You gunned him down from a distance of about 30 yards. Luck. Nothing but luck. Tharp had a big mouth. I judged his position by the sound of his voice. Fanned my gun, set a spray of bullets, and one of them hit him. That's not the kind of luck I want to push. I think not. Will, did you tell Lucy about this? 
No. Why not? Well, when I saw Lucy this morning, I didn't know where I stood. She still loves you. That's not what I mean. I didn't know what was happening to my eyes. Maybe in a few weeks or months, I'd go stone blind. I just didn't want to burden Lucy with that. Lucy's no baby. Chances are you're being too considerate. Mm, I don't think so. Anyway, there's nothing seriously wrong. Doc tells me I'll be all right. I want to talk to Lucy now. You know where she is? Well, she hasn't brought my lunch yet, but she's probably on her way out at the rodeo. I have to be there, too, so how about riding along? Why not? I'll get my horse and be right back. Ourselves. Seems like everyone's gone to the rodeo. Do you like rodeos? Yeah, if they're good ones. Yeah, me too. You see some nice stock at rodeos these days. Some nice horse flesh, too. Like that pinto over there. Yeah, nice horse. Yeah, it sure is. You gonna be in town long, Will? I'll be around. So will I. Maybe we can have that drink later. Maybe. What's the matter with you two fellas? You crazy? Why? That ain't no pinto over there. That's Jim Lewis who's stallion. No kidding. Lucy brought my lunch after all. She's inside and wants to talk to you. I'll go over to the house and eat. If you still want to go to the rodeo, stop by. Lucy? Dad told me about your eyes. There's a question I'd like to ask you. I think I know what it is. When I get my eyes fixed up, am I going to go back to being sheriff? Mm -hmm. It's been a bad year for me, Lucy. I never thought I'd miss you the way I did. It was a wasted year. For you, too? Yes, Will. Well, then I guess there's only one way for me to answer your question. Tomorrow, my eyes won't be a problem anymore, and I could get my job back. But I won't. I'll find something else. I'm so glad. Do you understand now? I love you so much, I just couldn't stand your being a sheriff. Never knowing when you might be brought home hurt or, or dead. My dad's been a lawman all his life. I've seen what it's done to him and the mother. Always worrying and... I know, I know. How do you like your husband wearing glasses? Well, I like it fine. As long as he's not wearing a gun belt. But you won't even let me hunt rabbits. Go tell Dad. Yeah, we better tell him everything's all right. He'll be worried about me, knowing your temper. Sonnet! Who's that? Sounds like Ben Crane. What does he look like? Oh, he's wearing a dark hat, green shirt. Tall. Is he a friend of yours? No friend. Sonnet! You better send your girlfriend back inside! That's Ben Crane, all right. What does he mean? I changed my mind. I think I'm fast enough now. Maybe I'd like to be a big man. Get back inside, Lizzie. No. Do as I say. 
Secret will. You can't even see him. Get back in there. That's better. I never figured you to be one to hide behind a woman's skirts. You been drinking, Ben? You wouldn't make this play earlier. No, I'm sober, Will. I never pick a fight when I'm drunk. I don't see too good when I'm drinking, and you gotta see good to fight, ain't that right? It's a fool play, but if you want it, let's make it close. Sure, Will, come on. There's about 60 paces between us, and that's no distance to fight. You want it closer? Come on, Will, I'm waiting. That's better. Keep coming. About 30 now, Will. That's a good distance. Hold it, Will. Thirty yards is just fine by me, Will. Of course, you might like it closer. Say twenty? But I'm calling this play. The old man here has been itching to see us tangle all day. Suppose we let him in on it. Start counting to five, old man. When he reaches five, you make your place on it. All right, old man, count. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. In there? Yep. That's what I figured. Why the rifle, Sam? No 45 slug makes the hole the size of the one in Crane. No? I taught Lucy how to shoot when she was a little girl. Looks like she didn't forget. Will said he was lucky. He sure is. He's getting quite a girl, Phineas. Quite a girl.
Well, that was a little bit of a different ending than I was expecting when I watched this episode for the first time. Dick Powell, after this, had Dick Powell's Zane Grey Theater, and this is very reminiscent of an episode of that series. Thank you for joining us for this episode of the Forsaken Westerns. We hope we'll see you again on down the trail. My name's Bob Terry. Have a great day.